So like I said, we was talking about Janice Katrina Matthews and how she lost her life and how I originally sympathized for her. I said that uh, when I found out about her, they said she was an evangelist. She was always had been serving God and, you know, she I called the church. I was going to go to her funeral and... When I talked to the church, they say it was a public memorial and they say it's going to be open to the public. So when I called them, I, I found out that it's kind of hard to get there by Amtrak a train or bus. So what I did was I called the church again to see how about getting there. Do they have any shuttle buses from satellite churches that'll pick you up? So when I called the church, they said this time to tell me that the church is going to have a private memorial because the uh, support for Denise Katrina Matthews is overwhelming. So I said, well, you know, I think a girl like this would like to have a public funeral that has overwhelming support. Easy E had one. You don't think Denise Katrina Matthews would want one? So this is what they tell me the second time I tell them. They said it is going to be private. So then I call them again. And then they say that the reason why the memorial is going to be private is because Prince is going to be there, and they don't want him to be in danger, but in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you say Prince is going to be there, and um, you don't want Prince to be in danger, but I'm thinking, well, Denise Katrina Matthews and MC Hammer already go there. What security do you have for these guys that you can't have for Prince? So I'm thinking this is really strange, you know. On top of it, this is the same, same church that she left the wills to. And passed away exactly 23 days after she signed the will, leaving her thing to this church. And they can even honor her with a public funeral because they think it's going to be overwhelming. Then they tell you that Prince is going to be there. So this is the reason why the funeral, why the memorial is going to be public. I got word from people that actually attended this memorial. The Prince didn't even show up. And there was no word on Prince even being there. That only adds to the suspicion. So I'm feeling sorry for this girl, right? So I'm thinking, well, this girl looked like she was the victim of some sort of a conspiracy. I'm like, it's no way somebody sit here and they die in that short of a time after they leave a will. And then you try to go to her funeral or her memorial and the very church is hosting it. Don't even want to be public. So I'm going to get, get to why this memorial wasn't a public memorial. But in order to explain why her memorial was not a public memorial, I had to explain what was going on in her personal life. So... Like I said, I said that, you know, Denise Katrina Matthews was visited by some old Jewish guys. And they came back to her and, you know, they told her, I said that, hey, you're supposed to have been following Jesus Christ's vows. You had not kept the vows with Jesus Christ. And they told Denise Katrina Matthews that because she had not kept her vows with Jesus Christ, that they have a right to seize her or she could die at any point in time that she's more or less living on borrowed time because she had not been following the certain set of rules that Jesus Christ gave her. They said, but the other option is that if she helped them assist in killing this guy that they believe is an angel is living on earth as a man right now, that the entity that they would kill the guy for would grant Denise Katrina Matthews a new lease on life with new terms of conditions, as well as metaphysical powers, or I could say magical abilities. As this guy's believed by the occult circle to be an angel, one of his strengths naturally as a spirit is what they told Denise Katrina Matthews she could attain if she sacrificed the guy. But they said, of course, she has to come back to the occult circle. So when these three about, about, three or four, about three Jewish guys, about three of Jewish guys, one of them was 62 years old, and he was more or less the one that was leading the whole thing, and he, he more or less made the deal with, sealed the deal with Denise Katrina Matthews to come back to the occult circle in a move to sacrifice this guy, but they also told Denise Katrina Matthews they want this man removed by the year 2016. So, Denise Katrina Matthews goes back to the occult circle where they're trying to sacrifice a guy that the occult circle believes is an angel incarnated as a man and that he's holding him back so they definitely want him out the way. So what Denise Katrina Matthews does is once you go back to the occult circle first, they do the rituals out of her house 
But then she starts to be homeless and she has to stay with different people because she starts to have a lot of problems. So, you know, like I said, one thing that I left out was that when Denise Katrina Matthews went back to the world of witchcraft, that she was following the guy through a form of divination to see if the witchcraft that they're doing is working on the guy. But what you don't know is that this form of divination that Denise Katrina Matthews was using was also a form of divination she used to use in her 20s. And this is how she got her name. Denise Katrina Matthews did not use crystal balls. But what she would do is, to see if her witchcraft is working on a guy, she goes in her closet and she has a mirror and she has a candle and she gets in front of the mirror she lights the candle and she whispers incantations. After she whispers incantations to the mirror, she sits there, she waits for a while for images or sometimes a spirit to appear, depending on what she's requesting. And in the images of the mirror, she could see if her magic is having some sort of effect on a guy. Now, this form of divination that she utilized in the last years of her life was the same form of divination she used in her 20s. The mirror she used to use in this form of divination is the same mirror that girls use in a vanity set. And that's really how Denise Katrina Matthews got her name Vanity, is because she used to use mirrors, a lit candle, and incantations to see visions. To see visions. Now, one thing I wanted to touch was that when those guys visited Denise Katrina Matthews, I thought that it was just some random juju guys that went to her house with some offer about we could get a hex off you or something like that. But what the investigator told me is that no, this was a long-term objective to remove this guy that stems from the 1980s. This guy that was born in 1982 is 23 years younger than Denise Katrina Matthews. He's not a public figure. He's not a celebrity. He's not a politician. He's an everyday person, but the occult circles of the Jews believe he's an angel that's incarnated as a man. So, in the 1980s, they have a plan where they merge Denise Katrina Matthews to the guy. And when they merge to the guy, she's given instructions to take the guy down. Now, the instructions that they give her to take the guy down... They tell her, like I said, that she had to bring herself a priority with the guy. Now, when they merge to the guy, the merge takes place in about 1985, when this guy is 23 years younger than Denise Katrina Matthews. At this point, it's two going on three years old, or three years old, depending on when the merge took place. But after the merge took place, the movie The Last Dragon was released as a cinematic or a theatric celebration of the merge between Denise Katrina Matthews and his young angel just living on Earth as a man. So Denise Katrina Matthews is then given instructions how to kill the guy. And this being an evangelist is only a part of being able to eventually kill the guy. So what happens is, what happens in her early 1980s picks up in about the year 2014 to 2016 and the evangelism part was just something that they had instructed Denise Katrina Matthews to do. As this guy said by them to be holy, they told Denise Katrina Matthews you just can't sacrifice this guy like he could sacrifice a random Joe a goat or a sheep, this guy, you have to bring yourself to some sort of spiritual parity with. You have to be yourself at par with them because if you touch a person like this and you're evil, you will bring about a harsh punishment against yourself. So as to ease the punishment against yourself, you have to bring yourself to some level of equality of their spiritual quality because if you make a move against this guy, it's going to be some punishment, but you don't want the punishment to be unbearable. So that's what they told her after the 80s, more around the late 80s and early 90s, in order to make a move against this guy, you have to put in work. Similarly to how Hindus believe in karma, where if you do good, you do good, you do good, you will reincarnate as a higher being, and you do good, you do good, until ultimately you unite with the Godhead. 
Well, what they told Denise Katrina Matthews is able to be able to make a move against this guy. You have to do enough good and do enough good and do enough good to bring yourself to a spiritual level of parity with this guy so that when you make a move against this guy, it'd be a safe execution. So this was why she became an evangelist. And that's why I explained earlier about the Jesus Christ giving her a genuine offering of being an evangelist or a genuine offer of following a Christian path. But what I will explain about the latter years is to explain the part about the early years. And what I'll say about the early years that precedes her evangelism, I want to bring it to the purpose of her being an evangelist and why ultimately she went back with those Jewish guys in about 2014 or the last years of her life when she went back to the world of witchcraft. Now, when she went back to the world of witchcraft, they told her, yeah, like I said, they want this guy killed about a year 2016 because with this guy being born in the year 1982 he would be the age of 34 about a year 2016 for all of you guys to really know your scripture you know jesus christ did not pass away at the masonic given age of 33 but he conquered satan at the true age of the age of 34. So that's why Denise Katrina Matthews and his Jewish Occult Network are privately trying to sacrifice this guy that's 23 years younger than Denise Katrina Matthews that a year 2016. They're working fervently to do this. I also explained that she had no surgeries and she has claimed she got saved. But when she went back to the world of the occult in the year 2014, she had not been saved 23 years like she said. Jesus Christ presented her with the offer in 1994 and 1994 plus 20 brings you to year 2014. That's not 23 years. She said she had 23 surgeries, but she had 21 surgeries as of the year 2013. I doubt they did two more surgeries in one year on a person that's already in frail health. So I told you when those Jewish guys that told her to set up that GoFundMe page, they're the ones that told her to express the age, excuse me, the number is 23, because the guy that she sided with them to uh, move with them against, this guy is 23 years younger than Denise Katrina Matthews. I've also explained that this is when she sided with the court circle against this guy they believe is a prophet. But I also explained that continuing from 2014 to where they staged her death and took her to that location, they separated her back the same numbers, January 23rd and 23 days later on February the 15th. This is the second pair of 23s, which is in 2016. Now, what I'm explaining is this is the true reason why her church wanted to have that private memorial. I told you. Her passing away was eerily suspicious. We're having a private memorial. We have overwhelming support. The second excuse, we're having a private memorial because Prince is gonna be there. Then you get word Prince wasn't even there at the memorial. The truth of the matter was what was going on in Fremont with these evil Jewish guys and Denise Katrina Matthews, they didn't want the people in the community to get the word out about what she was doing and trying to get rid of this guy that they believe is an angel. They told Denise Katrina Matthews crazy ass that if you sacrifice this guy, you will be a god on the earth. You will be able to do things like Moses splitting the Red Sea and like being able to part the skies. They told her all type of crazy lies. You know, she's not the brightest bulb on the tree. Denise Katrina Matthews has never been as sharp as knife in the jaw. So instead of her trying to, you know, make things right with Jesus Christ, this fool sides with these Jewish witches to kill somebody in full rebellion against the vow she had with Jesus Christ. So what I was explaining was, you know, she's going around telling all these lies. But the lie she's saying, a lie that she's being instructed to tell from people that are operating in her life behind the scenes. Then she goes and tries to sit here and try to make things right by sitting here and denying this. But you're sitting here and denying getting, what, 
Hollywood payments. Then you admit you're getting Hollywood payments because somebody got proof that you're getting paid from Hollywood. You owe Social Security money because you're getting $8,000 a month from Social Security and you're getting a Hollywood check on the side and then telling Social Security you're getting paid from Hollywood. So Social Security want their money back because you're getting paid from Hollywood and they reported to Social Security. And all you guys can get that, what do you call it, SSI, SSD, you know that when you get side payments, you got to report that shit to Social Security. So she won't report her Social Security payments. I mean, her, her, her Hollywood payments to Social Security. So now Social Security want their money. So, you know, and then she's sitting here talking about she don't commit adultery. She don't sleep around. Like she's better than the girls in her church. But she's working with a coven to commit human sacrifice because they tell her if they could kill this guy, she'd be able to work wonders. But she's supposed to be a devout Christian so much. A lot of you guys don't know that she actually made plans with these Jewish guys to leave the church. That's the only part that makes me sad because she got a whole lot of you guys out there thinking she was a, a Christian that loved the Lord. But the only thing that kind of pains me a little bit is that you guys don't know that she made plans to leave the church. I'm not talking about the church building. I'm talking about just to leave church activities. After they were supposed to have killed this man, Denise Katrina Matthews made plans... She probably would have even went back to Hollywood and did acting for this matter. And then I think she made plans. She definitely wasn't going to be a part of the church body no more. But she had made plans to leave the church and go about some sort of activities. The thing about it, she did leave the church, but it wasn't as she had planned. She did leave the church, but it wasn't like how she had thought. But um, she might have not went into acting, but she probably would have started on a reality TV show or something. But she definitely made plans to leave the church body. That's for sure. Um, what else did I wanted to touch on about this girl? What else? is one thing that skipped my mind. I want to say that I want to touch before it completely slips my mind. It completely slips my mind. Oh, yeah. Scripture says, even Satan comes as an angel of light. Be ye not surprised when he transform his apostles into apostles of light. I believe it's 2 Corinthians 11, 14 or 2 Corinthians eleven forty four. Even Satan comes, even Satan comes disguised as an angel of light. Be ye not surprised when his apostles are transformed as apostles of light. What I'm saying is, it may hurt you. It may pain you. But this girl only was an evangelist to serve the purpose that eventually costed her own life in the end. It was never to find God. It was never to have Jesus Christ and inherit the kingdom of God. The instructions as to why she became an evangelist was the same reason she can follow the Jesus Christ given instructions in 1994. And it's the reason why she did follow the instructions she was offered in 2014. The instructions she followed in 14 wasn't Jesus Christ's instructions. The Son of God, a divine being, she could not follow his instructions, but she could follow the instructions of an occult network that visits her house in 2014. She could not follow the instructions that gave her 20 years on earth, but she could follow the instructions of someone that caused her, what well, it came to her, what was it? Summer 2014. And so she died in what, like, like a year and a few months after she followed the instructions. Now she's gone, so to speak. So to speak. I'm just saying, you guys, 
You can sit here, and you can look at Billy Graham, and you can reject Billy Graham because he's a Freemason, part of the Louisiana Lodge, and a preacher. And he's white. You, you can reject Bob Dylan because he's a satanist that's a gospel singer. And he's white. I mean Jewish. Bob Zimmerman was his birth name. But the same logic you got for these little old evil white guys? Not my opinion, but your opinion. You don't have that same objective reasoning, that same objective observation against Denise Katrina Matthews, who's even worse than them? Because she got a little bit of color in her skin, though she's Jewish herself? You gotta understand that her life was hard for a reason. It's what she dedicated herself to that made her life painful. You guys want to make mockery of God. Why didn't God give Denise Katrina Matthews kidneys? Why didn't he help her? He followed Jesus Christ's instructions for 11 years from 1994 well, she took the offer. She started taking Hollywood payments in about the year 2007. So she was obedient for Jesus to at least about 11 years. But she started taking the payments for sure in 2007. So I'm not sure exactly, but I can sit here and say that, hey, in the long run, she wasn't with God. In the long run, she wasn't with Jesus. But you guys don't want to evaluate Denise. You want to do the unthinkable and question God as to why he didn't heal Denise. But you don't know that she went back on her vows with Jesus Christ. She's taking Hollywood money. She's lying telling this blog radio was 70 bucks. Then she go tell the church pool pit is three bucks, three dollars and 97 cents. But in Jesus, they don't take any money at all. Those Jewish guys, that's when they went to her goddamn house. That's the first thing they told Denise. They told her, you broke your vows with Jesus. The reason why you guys don't know the truth about why she went back to that world of witchcraft was because they mentioned to her what I'm telling you. They told her, you broke your vows with Jesus. We have a right to seize you. Or if we don't, you could just die within a few, a short while. They told Denise she was living on borrowed time that she could die at any time. When they told her that, they presented her with an offer. They asked her to come back to the circle so that they could sacrifice that guy that's 23 years younger than her. And she accepted their offer. If what had they said been true, it would have only been wise if what they said had been true. If what, if what they said had been true, though they were lying to her about this and lying to her about that. If what they had said had been true, it would have only been wise to go to church Sunday morning and make things right with God and Jesus. But instead, she thought that she was going to get a new lease on life and a cult dollars that she could split the skies and split seas and work wonders. This is what Denise and Trina Matthews was promised by this court circle. She would be able to do miraculous things. That's why she sat with them. That's the reason her private dealings with this occult circle and how she, for some reason, promised them little boys the things in a will, but instead left it to this suspicious church. That's an eerily suspicious church. An eerily suspicious church. A private funeral. A public funeral. A public funeral. A private funeral. Private because of overwhelming support. Private because Prince is going to be there. Show sure enough, Prince wasn't even there. He didn't even go to the damn memorial. This is the same church she left the will to? There's something suspicious about the church. and something suspicious about Denise. Her private dealings with this occult circle is why her days were shortened on this earth. 
That's also the reason why her memorial was private. It was not private because of any prince being there. Prince was not there. It was not private because of overwhelming support. It was private because they didn't want the word to get out about what was going on with this Jewish occult network, Denise Katrina Matthews, and this little church. I don't know the deals with the church, but I know how Janice Katrina Matthews left the world. And you know, you guys are in love with a disguise. That's the best thing I can tell you. You guys are just in love with a disguise. That's the best thing I could tell you. Because once I did research, the guy told me everything about this from start to finish. I couldn't believe it. I was going to go to her funeral. I mean, excuse me, her memorial. Then I thought this church was behind it. I was like, hey, she left everything to you guys? The best thing you could do for her is a private memorial? Then you lie and say that, you know, Prince is going to be there. I know people that went to the memorial. Let's say he didn't even show up there. Prince wasn't there. They didn't want people to start talking and find out people that know what was going on with the church, people that would know what was going on with Denise Katrina Matthews. They didn't want people to start talking and they didn't want the secret to get out as to what was going on with this little wicked Jewish coven, this little sorcerers, Denise Katrina Matthews, and these damn Jewish practitioners of human sacrifice. See, I found out because I went to an investigator. The investigator said, this woman that you're sympathetic for for fell in her own trap. He said this woman, when he did the investigation, he said that I'm not used to investigations like this. But what he said was that this girl was dealing with some people that are cult oriented. They were occult oriented people. He said there's a man they want to remove that they believe that they believe anyway is some sort of a spirit incarnated as a man. He says that she's dealing with these people, he said, and these people are apprehendable by the law. He said that Denise could have had them arrested. As big as they think they are, they could have been arrested by, well, Denise Katrina Matthews could have had them arrested. That's what the guy told me. He says, but apparently in her personal life, she sides with these people. He says, when she sides with these people, more or less what happens is, he said her death was staged. But these people more or less tell her to sell all her things because they're going to take her somewhere to where she'll find healing. He said this girl didn't die, but they tell her they're going to take her somewhere. And from this location, she's going to get healing. He says that the guy is 23 years younger than her. This is why they operate around the number 23. He said this guy is believed to be born in 1982. So around the time when she rejoined the occult world, She's told the numbers 23 because it symbolizes who she's operating against. And when these occultists that Denise is separate is operating with, when they ritualistically separate her from the guy, they do it around the numbers 23 because now the guy she's operating against, they're separating her from this very guy. He said that. He also, another thing they said, um, the guy that she's supposed to be married to since 1985, this was a private marriage in the same way her memorial was a private memorial. Nevertheless, she was married to this guy. They say she's not married to the guy in the movie. I think his name is Leroy Green or Bruce Leroy. She's not married to this guy, but this movie that was released as a cinematic celebration of the marriage, it says the guy she's married to has the essence of the guy or the character in that movie. That character... In the movie, he has an essence or a personality or a character essence just like the guy in that movie. It says that that's one of the significance behind her and this guy. It says, but though this guy has that essence, during the period of murder, he's only three. And not just the character in the movie, but the guy in real life is believed to be an angel whose essence is like the guy in that movie, The Last Dragon. They said, Denise knew he's an angel. They said, this whole scheme that took her life down was a long-term objective that extends from the 1980s. I just want you guys in Fremont to know that this wasn't a random thing where Denise Katrina Matthews just slipped into the world of witchcraft. It wasn't some juju guys selling oils and incenses and say, let's get a hex off you. 
but this was a lifelong agenda that she dedicated herself to and which led to her downfall or departure and it was her own undoing y'all it was Denise Katrina Matthews own undoing all her fault